Good morning. Let's start with the next topic of chapter 19, excretory products and their elimination. Today we'll discuss about the kidneys and the other related organs. Uh, we know that kidneys, they are reddish brown in color, they are bean shaped in structure and they are situated at the level of the last thoracic and the third lumbar vertebrae which is called to, closer to the uh, dorsal inner wall of the abdominal cavity. So it is in the abdominal cavity. So each kidney of an adult uh, measures about 10 to 12 centimeters in length, 5 to 7 centimeters in width and 2 to 3 centimeters in thickness and with an average weight of 120 to 170 grams. Now towards the center, towards the center uh, of the inner concave surface of the kidney is a notch that is called as hilum. So this part is called as the hilum. Uh, hilum uh, is the structure through which the ureter, blood vessels and the nerves, you can see here various nerves, they are entering as well as the arteries, blood vessels, they are entering. So uh, this part is called as the hilum uh, through which the ureter, blood vessels and the nerves, they enter. Inner to the hilum is a broad funnel shaped structure or the space which is called as renal pelvis. You can see this part, this is called as renal pelvis with projections called calices. One singular is called as a calyx and various these structures, uh, these are called as calices. Uh, the outer layer of the kidney is a tough capsule. So this is the outer past, uh, part which is uh, called as the capsule. And inside the kidney there are two zones, an outer cortex and the inner medulla. You can see here cortex and uh, medulla, this part. This part is medulla and the outer part is cortex. So medulla is divided into a number of conical masses, medullary pyramids. Okay, these are called as medullary pyramids. You can see here. Uh, projecting into the calices and uh, uh, these uh, calices, uh, the, cort the cortex, it extends in between the medullary pyramids as renal columns which are called as uh, columns of Bertini. So these columns, they are also called as columns of Bertini. Okay, so this is the structure of the kidney. Longitudinal section or diagrammatic part of the kidney is visible like this. Next we come to nephron. Now each kidney has nearly 1 million uh, complex tubular structures which are called as the nephrons and uh, uh, these are the functional units. And each nephron has two parts. One is the glomerulus and another is the renal tubule. So glomerulus, you can see here, it is a tuft of capillaries. Glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries uh, formed by the efferent and the uh, efferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. Efferent arteriole, it's a fine branch of renal artery and the blood from the glomerulus is carried away by the efferent arteriole. Okay, so it is carried away by efferent and it is carried in by the efferent arteriole. So the renal tubule begins with a double walled cup like structure which is called as Bormann's capsule. So tubular part begins from here. So this is the glomerulus part and this is the tubular part which begins from here which is called as the Bormann's capsule. Uh, now uh, this uh, encloses uh, the glomerulus and glomerulus along with the Bormann's capsule is called as the Malphigian body or the renal corpuscle. Okay, this part is also called as the renal corpuscle or the Malphigian body. Now the tubule continues further to form a highly co coiled network. The first part is the proximal convoluted tubule, then loop of Henle, then distal convoluted tubule and then the collected duct. Okay, you can see all the parts in this diagram also. So this is the Bormann's capsule and uh, here you can find the loop of Henle. This is the proximal convoluted tubule, this one PCT and this is the distal convoluted tubule. Proximal is the anterior part, distal is the posterior part, jo wala part hai, aage wala part. Okay, and then uh, the tubule continues further to form a highly coiled network which is called as proximal loop of Henle and later the distal convoluted tubule. And a hairpin shaped structure that is called as the loop of Henle. It's a hairpin like structure. Uh, which has descending and the ascending limb. Okay, ascending which is going downwards and descending which is going in the away. So the ascending limb continues in another highly coiled tubular structure which is called as the uh, distal convoluted tubule. 
and uh, and many nephrons they open into the straight tube called the collecting duct many nephrons okay many nephrons they are opening into this and uh, many of which coverage and open into a renal pelvis through the medullary pyramid of the calyces of the kidneys now uh, as you have seen in the previous uh, uh, slide uh, we, we have seen that uh, the malphigian corpuscles and the various parts of the nephron they are situated in the cortical region of the kidney and the loop of henle and the medulla uh, they are uh, they are too short to extend a little in the medulla so the nephrons they are of two types one is cortical nephrons and cortical nephrons and juxta medullary nephrons so two types of nephrons are there one is uh, the uh, one is called as the cortical nephrons and others are juxta medullary nephrons and the efferent arteriole emerging from the glomerulus it also forms a capillary network around the renal tubule which is called as peritubular capillaries and the minute vessels of this network runs parallel to the loop of henle which forms a u-shaped structure which is called as vasa recta so vasa recta is absent or highly reduced in the cortical nephrons then we come to the topic of urine formation it involves three main processes glomerular filtration reabsorption and secretion the first step in the urine formation is the filtration of the blood okay glomerular filtration which is carried out by the glomerulus and is called as glomerular filtration now on an average 1100 to 1200 milliliters of blood is filtered by the kidneys per minute which constitutes roughly one by fifth of the blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart in a minute the glomerular capillaries you can see here these capillaries the glomerular uh, capillaries uh, and the blood pressure which causes the filtration of the blood through three layers that is the endothelium of the glomerular blood vessels and uh, the epithelium of the bowman's capsule this part and uh, a basement membrane between these two layers so epithelial cells of the bowman's capsule which are called as podocytes they are arranged in an intricate manner so as to leave some minute spaces between the filtration slits or the slit pores here now blood is filtered so finely through these membranes that almost all the constituents of the plasma except the proteins they pass into the lumen of the bowman's capsule and therefore it is considered as a process of ultra filtration so that is why we call it as ultra filtration now the amount of the filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called as glomerular filtration rate okay so what is the definition of glomerular filtration rate is the amount of filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute and the gfr in a healthy individual is approximately 125 milliliters per minute which is 180 liters per day and the kidneys they have a built-in mechanism for regulation of glomerular filtration rate and one such efficient mechanism is carried out by juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus is a special sensitive region formed by the cellular modifications in the distal convoluted tubule and the efferent efferent arteriole of the location and a fall in the gfr can activate uh, the juxta glomerular glomerular cells to release a uh, uh, renin which can stimulate the glomerular blood flow and glomerular filtration rate will be back to normal now a comparison of the volume of the filtrate formed per day with that of the urine release suggests that nearly 99% of the filtrate has to be reabsorbed by the renal tubules ठीक है tubules में दोबारा से reabsorption हो जाता है and the tubular epithelial cells is diff in different segments of the nephron perform this either by active or passive mechanisms for example substances like glucose amino acids sodium ions in the filtrate are reabsorbed actively whereas the nitrogenous waste are absorbed by the passive transport so reabsorption of uh, water also occurs passively in the initial segments of the nephron so during urine formation the tubular cells secrete substances like uh, hydrogen ions potassium ions uh, and ammonia into the filtrate and tubular secretion is also an important step in urine, urine formation as it helps in the maintenance of ionic and acid balance of the body fluids